yourself tonight Let the beauty set you free Let the music set you free Oh yeah Take a break from life Won't you come and spend some time So I'm almost done stopping out the areas that I don't want the acid to get at and of course I have to remember to stop out the feather as well don't want the acid to go in and destroy our soft ground so <coughs> see what I've done here is I've put ground on all the areas that I want to stay pure white because we're gonna put the, the plate through various times in the acid so we get light grays we get the darker grays etc etc now I have a little bit of acid damage around the edge here you see especially here so I'm going to use some litho crayons which are available in good art shops this is a litho crayon that comes as a pencil and I'm actually going to draw a little bit with the litho crayon, which is acid resistant, along the edge to work up what I hope is at least is going to be like a little bit of an interesting frame. Now remember, where, where I apply the litho crayon, of course the acid is not going to get in. So I'm actually making myself a frame here that is going to come up printing what I hope in a little bit of different shades of greys. Don't overdo it. The, the lithocrane, of course, because the plate, the copper plate, now has this grainy surface from the rosin, from the aquatint rosin, it kind of is quite easy to get on there. You just use it as a normal crayon. This is a wax-based crayon, so I'm not really sure actually if other crayons would work as well, but there you go. I'm going to try it out like that to start with. So I'm just going to wait for my ground to dry completely now, and then we're going to move back out to the acid. And for the, very, for the first time in the acid, I'm going to give the plate 30 seconds. Aquatint develops quite quickly. Okay, you, you, um, the, the acid will bite in very, very quickly. So I know that you're kind of thinking, what, 15 minutes for a line and only 30 seconds for a light gray. But that is actually enough. Um, if you leave it in for too long, what happens is that you just get a whole bunch of dark grays and you actually can't tell the difference between anything. So instead of me kind of going on and on explaining to you, I'm just going to tell you the times that I put it in the acid and then you can see the end result. All right? All suited up, ready to go, and this is because for the first round in the acid, it's only going to get 30 seconds. So I have my alarm clock here with that, that does have a second hand, and I put it in. And I simply stand around timing it. 30 seconds is going to give me a tone. You know, when you start out, this is the, this is the first thing that you constantly kind of have a hard time getting past and that is that 30 seconds will give you a tone. You don't want to have it in for any longer than that. This of course is because you want to be able to run the whole length of grey tones under the water quickly because time goes. As long as you have acid on the plate that acid is going to keep on biting. And you know, you can clearly see that the whole plate has now gone matte because of the, the acid biting into it. So now I'm going to go back into the studio. I'm going to apply more stop out to the areas that I want to stay, the very lightest gray, i.e. my lightest shading. And I'm going to work my way up like that. So back into the studio. So I've uh, stopped out quite a bit more on the plate now. You can start to see that the drawing is actually starting to show up. 
Uh, make sure the areas that you stocked out first, the ones that you want to be white, maybe you need to go over them a little bit because remember the acid is corrosive and it can be that because they are like quite thin that they start thinning out a little bit and the acid goes through. So for the second grey, put on my glasses and my gloves. For the second grey, I'm only going to put the plate in the acid for another 30 seconds. This is, of course, because the second grey now will then get the first 30 seconds plus the second 30 seconds, which means that it's actually getting a minute. Think about that, that you don't kind of think in the interval that it's in the acid, but you also think about the previous intervals that it's been in the acid. Thirty seconds is not a long time, so forget doing anything else. All you're going to do is stand there looking at those seconds ticking by. And here we go. One, two, three, and the plate comes out of the acid again. I let it run off a little bit, but I really want to transfer it over to the water as quickly as possible to get the acid off there. I make sure I get all the acid off the plate, okay? It's no fun to discover later on that you have acid all over your studio. All right, so it's been for the second time in the acid and I'm going to go back in the studio and I'm going to stop out the areas that I now want to be a little bit darker grey. now stopped out my plate for the third time okay you can now clearly see that I haven't got that much left um, also remember to reinforce the places that you stopped out to be white because that that uh, ground might be wearing a little bit thin now I've had the plate in the acid 30 seconds plus 30 seconds and I'm now going to add a minute to get my third gray color so back it goes in the acid eye on the clock and we'll wait for a minute. The, the thing with this, with the reductive method, is that you have to pretty much know what you're doing, but in a way I also kind of think that I've found that even if I'm not that sure that I'm, oh, have I, did I remember that or did I forget that, it actually usually works out. The line etching that you've put on the plate, of course, in the areas where the acid can get in, will start to get a little bit weaker. So if you need to, you can reinforce that with a little bit of dry point, that is going over it with a tool without grounding or anything like that, as long as you do it light enough, it might need a little bit of reinforcing. All of this shows when we go to print it, we're going to see the result. Okay, we're coming up to a minute. And here it comes out of the acid. All right, all ready, all washed up, and I'm going to take it back into the studio, and I'm going to do the fourth stopping out. Okay, I've done all my stopping out, and the only areas I've got left now are the areas that I'm going to want to come out really, really dark. I've had the plate in the acid for 30 seconds, plus 30 seconds, plus a minute. To get these areas to print really, really black, I'm going to want to leave the plate in the acid for about 15 minutes now. So I'm going to put it in the acid. I'm going to time it for my 15 minutes. And I guess we'll have another cup of coffee and come back. All right? All right, the plate is all done, the 15 minutes are up, and I'm going to take the plate out for the last time. Now we're going to have gotten, hopefully at least, all our very dark darks, and I am going to wash the plate off. 
very carefully both back and front be sure I have no traces of acid left so I'm now going to take the plate back into the studio and we're going to clean it off and we are going to get to see what the plate actually looks like what our aqua tint looks like We're back in the studio and I'm going to clean the plate off. I'm going to use a bit of turpentine to get rid of my ground and my litho crayon. As I clean it off now you can clearly see the white areas coming up. And to remove the actual aqua tint, I put on alcohol, which dissolves the rosin. You can see how the rag turns yellow from the aqua tint powder. This, of course, is always the interesting bit when you get your first look at what the plate is going to look like. This is why I became a printmaker, because I absolutely love this. In a way, you just never know. The most beautiful plate won't print, and the most boring plate will print fantastically. Plate's all clean, and we are ready to do a proof. Take a break from life, won't you come and